We welcome in Sal Licata and Chris Lopresti for Subway Central. And folks, Brandon Nimmo with a rough night on Tuesday, dropping the ball in center field. It appeared goat horns were going his way again after that base running blunder, but he ends up the hero. So, Chris, how badly did he and the Mets need this win. Absolutely. Great way to finish the two game series where there's a lot that still went wrong for the Mets issues to clean up things that kind of make you scratch your head a little bit. I think for Nimmo at least from a non Met fan what makes it a little easier to stomach is these are usually effort plays even the ball he dropped uh, you know the night prior was a ball that I thought he got a good jump on that maybe some center fielders don't get to so doesn't excuse the fact he doesn't make the catch. I know he felt that the, uh, the base running blunder wasn't necessarily a blunder and felt that the runner ahead of him should have scored so look he's a guy that gives all out effort you know the attitude and the heart is in the right place so it's nice to see those guys rewarded and you know he had a big home run answer against Luis Severino the night prior and comes up with the big hit to finish this one off as well he's one of the few guys on that ball club right now that I trust to get the job done that's why it was so disappointing when he made that misplay that they played called a double somehow but <laughs> or even getting you know picked off a second base there in that spot and I'm not blaming him on that as a matter of fact I blame Vientos but anyway it's nice to see Nimmo go get the redemption because you know he was wearing it the night before in game one he he felt it. He let the team down. He wasn't the reason why they lost, but a part of it. But I do trust Brandon Nimmo to get the job done. He's been one of the more consistent performers. I mean, look at what he's evolved to here. For the Mets, you could argue he's their best player, especially with Alonzo out. Defensively, offensively, I have great trust and confidence in Brandon Nimmo. He got the job done. Have to feel good for him. All right, so the good news is for the Mets, they won. The bad news for the Mets is there were about a trillion more mental lapses. Even the owner, Steve Cohen, tweeted too many mental lapses. So, Hal, how, Sal, how do you try to explain this team from going razor sharp and locked in in year one under Buck Showalter to clueless at times this year? Uh, I don't know, and I hope that King Cohen can figure it out because it's unacceptable. And I thought that tweet was nice. You know, he's happy to have the win. But that is unacceptable baseball. And it is something that last year the Mets didn't do at all, beat themselves. This year they do it routinely. Every game they're making terrible mistakes. I mean, even when they're winning, they're scoring runs, they're screwing up on the base pads. It's, it's horrible. I don't know how it happens with essentially the same team and the same manager that we gave credit for having a team that played the game the right way. So it's got to get fixed, Elo. That is number one. We can talk about Max Scherzer or Verlander or whatever. The guys in that lineup, Lindor, they got to start cleaning those things up. Otherwise, they're not going anywhere. You can maybe include the coaching staff in this one as well. You talked about, you know, Cora. He's been terrible. Yeah. This year. So you know that was a curious hold up there with two outs. You get Billy McKinney in left field, who you know is not exactly a household name as far as uh, defensive outfield goes. So a couple of things, you know, physical errors as well. There were some nice plays defensively, but you had you know Vientos missed a, missed the ball throw over at first. Jeff McNeil made a questionable throw at one point. So I think it gets to a, a situation where these things can become contagious. So as the team starts to go the wrong direction. Those things kind of can trickle through to multiple parts of your game. Sometimes you're struggling at the plate. You take it out into the field defensively because you're maybe thinking about the struggles you're having at the plate, maybe not as locked in defensively. And also, we've harped on the starting pitching. Not in this case, Verlander had a nice outing, but overall, starting pitching hasn't been great. And sometimes that has a trickle-down effect to what happens in the field with your defense as well. So I think it's at all levels, and when the team's going bad, all of a sudden those things start to be magnetized a little bit. I mean, even the game-winning run was chaotic. The guy I was on second base. The yeah. ball hits the wall. Uh, and we have a play at home play. You Where go halfway. It's pretty simple there. He makes it. It's unbelievable. It really what is doing. tough to believe.